Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Dalbavis Charlotte Salomon, which was part of the Salzburg of Festspiele. And since this is a new opera, it has made its debut at the Felsenheit Schule. The conductor was also the composer himself, Marc Andre Dalbavi. The production was by Luc Bondi. The set designer was Johannes Schutz. The costumes were by Moidella Bekel. The dramaturgy was by Konrad Kuhn. The lighting was handled by Bertrand Couder. And the choreographer and associate director was Marie Louisa Bischofberger. Now, I've never really heard of Charlotte Salomon, the real life Charlotte Salomon, the artist, until I watched this opera. And as I did a little bit of research, I found out that she was also an artist living in World War II, Nazi Germany, and she was also a Jewish. So she's lived her life as an artist, and her most well known work was Life or Theater. A Singspiel, which is basically a memoir about her life and how she views the world and especially mentioning composers in her memoir like Beethoven, Wagner, Bizet, and many other composers. And she, since she lived in this time, she also died very tragically at only 26 years old in Auschwitz. So she lived a very, well, interesting yet very tragic life with her life with her family, the lover that she had, and also how she was expressing herself through her art, whether it's painting or writing. And the style that she specialized in was expressionism. So she was one of those expressionist artists of the 30s or even the other 40s, so she was quite well known at the time, but, well, her life was cut tragically short. And with this opera, this has become quite the subject for French composer Marc-André d'Albavi, and it's made its debut at this very house, the Felsenreitschule, and it was basically having a cast of very well-known French and German opera singers, plus one Polish opera singer. So it was quite the debut that it had tonight. So without further ado, let's get on with what I thought about the production. Well, this is a Luc Bondi production, so it's quite minimalistic in its approach, but it's able to con convey a lot of emotion and a lot of, well, a lot of psychological details, so to say, especially when venturing into the characters' minds and their psyches and what they go through day to day and what they're thinking on a daily basis. And what's quite interesting about this opera is that this is performed in both German and French. This is actually quite an accomplishment because, well, since the opera was set in Germany, and since um, Charlotte Salomon has spent some of her life in France before her tragic death, this is actually quite interesting to have these two languages meshed up. And what's also quite interesting was that the real-life Charlotte Salomon, the Charlotte Salomon outside the stage is basically acted. Sure, she does have some lines to sing, but she ultimately is the narrator of this whole opera. And she goes under the name, well, the character, the singing character goes under the name of Charlotte Kahn, which is basically like her pen name or something. So going to the production, it is quite bleak, as in all white. I mean, the furniture actually is nice, as if though I was in Charlotte's world. I mean, I think that's just how Bondi envisioned this production, as if we are traveling through Charlotte's mind, and how her mind is is that it's totally bleak with her mother committing suicide, her grandmother almost on the verge of suicide, and her 
also almost on the verge of suicide. So it's definitely a bleak world that was painted. And I really like all the paintings that were also shown on the stage as well, as if to convey that this is what Charlotte Zellerman has done in her life. And it's all coming to life once again before our very eyes. It's just really amazing. Not to mention the sketch that was done. I thought it was just well done, as if to highlight Charlotte's development as an artist, even though at times she is quite flighty and quite hot-headed. It is actually very interesting to see the world around her, and the costumes I thought were very decent. It seems as though that these costumes were basically those type of clothes that people would wear at World War II. And honestly, I can see this concept of the opera work like a film. All we need is a very great film director, be he French, German, whatever, that someone who really knows how to work with images. I could really see this opera becoming a film, but more on that later. But like I said, the production really highlights the bleakness of Charlotte's world, and the costumes were absolutely well done. And the paintings really enhanced the scenes that we got ourselves into. So, let's get on with the performers. In the acting role of Charlotte Salomon, we have a German actress by the name of Johanna Vokalek. She was able to deliver Charlotte's lines with such a world weariness that I was able to hear that this is why she has become so tired with the world even if she has a career as an artist, that she still pushes through. She feels, she sounds so tired with the world, and it's so believable of how she sounds like, especially when they were departing for the train. I thought she was able to evoke that type of energy, that excitement, that anxiety that she has for leaving for a new world, and not to mention, her, her French was very flawless. How she was able to convey her French in one scene, well, the epilogue, I thought was just very well done. So she was able to paint a very world-weary picture of Charlotte Salomon, which was very well done. In the singing role of Charlotte Salomon, or Charlotte Khan, we have a very young French coloratura mezzo by the name of Marianne Crebassa. I've never really heard of her before. I've never heard any clips of her on YouTube, but after experiencing her voice live on stage, I was just blown away. This young woman definitely has a bright career of, ahead of her. She has such a beautiful sounding timbre very homogenous throughout the registers. She was able to make such clean, clear attacks on all of the notes, and she was able to handle the drama very well. Acting-wise, she was able to play Charlotte's curiosity and flighty nature when she's a teenager, and her, well, her more understanding nature as she grows up. But I felt that she was at her best when she played the younger Charlotte. Very wide-eyed, very curious, very feisty, jovial, yet quite cynical at times. I thought it was very well done. She was able to make this Charlotte come to life, and she did it very beautifully. I thought it was just such a very beautiful portrayal of a very tragic character. Playing her parents and stepmother were Jean-Sébastien Beau, who was a French baritone, who sang the role of Dr. Can, Géraldine Chauvet, who is a French mezzo with some Falcon tendencies, who sang the role of Francisca Khan, by the way. 
Jaudin Chauvet is a very well-known interpreter of the Falcon repertoire, though mostly her repertoire is that of a, me of a lyric mezzo, though nowadays heading towards the more dramatic and Falcon repertoire. She was well-known as Carmen, Ximena, Santuzza, um, Donna Elvira, and nowadays she's singing Adriano and the Kostelnitschka from Yanufa. But more than anything, her Carmen was very well loved by both the fans and critics. And then her stepmother, we have another French mezzo, Anaïk Morel. Now let's start with Beau as the doctor. He sang very well. He had such a solid technique in his voice. No cracks. It was a very well-focused, dramatic baritone that was just very even throughout the registers and very convincing in his acting as well. Jardine Chauvet as Francisca. Wow. Just wow. Even though her role was very thankless, she was able to pull off all the stops with her luxurious and silky sounding voice and also a powerful and dramatic voice with a very great amount, a great gamut of emotions. And you could really feel that she is in depression. It's such a harrowing portrayal of a mother who is on the verge of further depression or worse, suicide. She was able to paint that harrowing picture very well, and I hope for the best in her future in the more dramatic roles, because, well, like I said, Chauvet is very well known as Carmen and many other roles in the lyric and Falcon repertoire, so I really hope to hear more, in, hear more of her in the dramatic repertoire because she has a lot of potential to sing the heavier repertoire, and I really, really hope that her voice will still be intact, which I'm sure it will be. I'm sure that she's able, she, she's still able to take care of her voice, and I'm sure that she has a very secure technique. Well, she has a secure technique, and I really hope for the best in her future in the more dramatic roles, and this is definitely a stepping stone for her as she was able to portray Francisca's turmoil with such finesse that it was just so believable. And then the stepmother, Polinka, was sung by Anaïk Morel. Now Anaïk Morel is very well known for her interpretations of the lyric mezzo repertoire. If you excuse me earlier. So she's very well known in singing Hensel and Mercedes from Carmen and many others. Here, I thought she was able to put her luxurious mezzo voice to such a great advantage. She sang the Abanera with such finesse and beauty, and she was able to act her role very well. It is such a very beautiful instrument that I really hope to hear more of. And honestly, it's such such a pleasure to listen to both of these mets these wonderful French mezzos live on stage, just do their thing as the mother figures of Charlotte Zalamon. With Anaïk Morel, I really hope to hear more of her in the near future because she has such a, luxur a luxurious and very, very sensual sounding instrument and I thought these parents were able to do their job very well. And then the grandparents were sung by veteran dramatic baritone Vincent Le Tessier and German contralto Cornelia Kalisch. I thought these two sounded very marvelous. They were able to make the grandparents sound very old, especially Kalisch. She was able to bring out that world weariness and that stress that she has from this grandmother. She's dealing with a lot of pain and misery and not to mention with Chauvet's little scene as Francisca, it's also very reminiscent of the death scene of Madame de Croissy. Likewise, 
it can be said for Kailash's portrayal as the grandmother. Her scene where she's almost nearing her death is so reminiscent of Madame de Quassy's. I thought it was just so harrowing, and her voice really helps. It is a dark sounding and very mature sounding instrument that really helped with the portrayal of this tragic character. And Vincent Le Tessier, wow, just wow. He was able to put a lot of heart and soul into this very thankless character. He was able to portray the grandfather's sorrow and misery and how he reacted about his first three relatives' death. It is such a harrowing portrayal, and it's also helped by his dark and very mature-sounding voice. So these two as the grandparents, I thought they did their roles very well. Frédéric Anto sang the role of the music teacher, Amadeus Dabello, and he's basically well known for singing in a lot of the light lyric tenor repertoires, you know, like Tamino and Gerard from Lacme, and also that of Alma Viva from Barbiera. I thought he was just gorgeous. I thought he was just marvelous. He had such a marvelous instrument. He hit those high notes very well, and he was able to give such a passionate portrayal of this music teacher. So kudos to him. Then we have the character tenor, a French character tenor, Elie Houchet, who sang the roles of the Pope, the propaganda minister, the professor of the arts, the first Nazi, a man, and the second immigrant. He had a very well-tuned voice. He was able to use that character tenor voice to such an advantage especially with the propaganda minister. It was just well done. And he was able to play that jerk-ass nature very well. So he was totally well done in these roles. And then we have a Polish opera singer who was a baritone by the name of Michal Partika, who sang Professor Kling Klang, the student of arts, and the third Nazi and the policeman. A very well-tuned voice and very great acting. And we have Anika Schlicht, who I saw back in Berlin as the second lady and as the slave from Salome. She sang the role of the student of arts from Tyrol, and even though she had only like one or two lines, she has such a fine voice, and I really hope the best for her future. And then we have Wolfgang Resch as the second Nazi, another young singer who has a very fine voice, and I also hope the best for his future. I really hope to hear more of him. I really hope to see him grow as a singer, as an artist. So overall, there was just a lot of well-done singing from all interpreters of each character. There were no weak links, and they were able to give their all. They were very in shape, well, vocally in shape, and also theatrically in shape, and they were just absolutely convincing as these characters. And the conducting done by Monsieur Dalbavi was well done. It's harrowing. It's frightening and sometimes. And what's also worth mentioning about this opera is that it's also performed in German and French, Rarely do you have an opera that performs in two languages, but here I thought it was just well done, since this took place in both Berlin during World War II and during Charlotte's final hours or days at, in France, and I thought it was just well done. And I could honestly see this opera becoming an opera film. All we need is a very great director. I don't mind if it's um, someone like Franco Zeffirelli, Francesco Rossi, or many other great European directors, whether he be a Frenchman, Italian, or German, or anybody. Anybody who is a great film director could probably make this opera a film, because I definitely see this opera as an opera film. It's so filmic in its approach, and sure, 
it's great as as it is in theater, but it would probably be a lot more beautiful and a lot more, well, realistic and a lot more gripping if it were made in, as a film. So I could really see a lot of potential and material with this opera, and I really hope that this gets a film version one day. So overall, this was definitely an exciting debut for this opera, and thank goodness I was able to catch it. I was absolutely, well, I was absolutely entertained, not just entertained, but I was absolutely satisfied with all of the performers, the singers, the chorus, the conductor, the orchestra, they all did very wonderfully. So a uh, grand kudos to Monsieur Marc-André Dalbavi for a very successful opera debut. And I hope that this opera is not only performed worldwide, but I also hope that this opera gets a film adaptation. Well, keep the singers and also have a very great director, and I hope this does get shot on location, because there's a lot of interesting things to work with this opera that I could really see it as a film. And if ever, if ever, this opera has a film adaptation, I would definitely go out of my way to either get the DVD or even just watch it on YouTube or any video sharing site. So I'm very excited for the success of this opera, and I really want to see it progress even further. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where I review. Let me see what is happening tomorrow. I will check. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, where I review the symphony orchestra of the... Well, basically, I'll be watching a symphony orchestra, and they'll be specializing in a lot of classical pieces, and it's going to be shown at the Gulses Festspielhaus. Oh, it's the Bruckner cycle, as I realize. It's the Bruckner cycle that I'll be watching, so I am very exciting for, excited for that for tomorrow, as it's going to be shown at the Gulses Festspielhaus. So until then, this is Antonio signing off and wishing you all a good night.